is Bobby from Dick Coded here and this is the second video in building and launching a real Django website series. The last video is there and if you do watch it you'll see that we've started a new project in Django. We've tweaked the settings file for static files and uh, media files and we've updated the URL comp file. So in this video we're going to add another layer of security to the built-in admin page that Django comes with. Um, on that page, if you visit it after you've created a super user, you can log in with a username and password, which is great, it's okay security, you can go in the back end and tweak objects, but there's a lot of damage that can be done in the back end, so we really need another layer of security to make sure that you keep the toe rags out and only those with the one-time six-digit password that is generated can get in to the back end. Now we use a third-party app such as Google Authenticate to create those six-digit passwords or one-time passwords. Um, but when we visit the new site, it's a hell of a lot more secure and um, it's a lot more robust, which is exactly what we want. So what we want to do is import or pip install a QR code and Django one-time password. So the links to those are all in the description of this video. So I've got my uh, directory open here, so we need a command prompt, so cmd, opens on the other screen, typical, and we want to work on, we call it did demo. The brackets here on the left signifies that the virtual environment is actually working, which is great. Now we want to pip install QR code and Django, DJANGO-OTP, one-time password. And what that will do is that will add everything into the virtual environment so that we can now use it. Now you can see here that some of the um, requirements are already satisfied. That's because we already had it in our requirements.txt file. And so what we'll do now is we will uh, pip, read. actually I've got the uh, requirements file open in the background here. You can see that it's only got these bits and pieces in there now. But if we hit freeze, point it towards requirements.txt, what I'll do is we open it again, there we are. So it's now got Django OTP, it's got QR code in there, which is great. We now close that down. So if we look at the docs for OTP, it says after you've pip installed, what you need to do is you need to install Django OTP to your installed apps. You also need some middleware to be added to your middleware in the settings file underneath the authentication middleware. So we'll go ahead and do that. But we'll just copy it straight from the docs here. So we want the OTP, but we also want the plugin for TOTP device because we want to assign a um, Google Authenticator device to an actual user, and that's where you do it. So we'll copy that across. We'll ping it straight into our installed apps and save, and then we'll also go back to the docs and we'll pick up this middleware piece here. And what I like to do when I add it to my settings file, I also like to add uh, a brief note. Because if you come back to this in six months and you've got 101 different settings in your settings file, you sometimes question why you've got them in there. So this is for Django OTP must be below or middle where yeah there you go that'll do i know what that is now so now we go into we need to actually let's copy this because we need this so we'll copy that there which is the django otp plugins otp totp device so we'll copy that because we need it in the urls one thing i did forget in the last video before i forget in this one is if you go to the main app and go into that URLs, what I forgot to do is I, I forgot to add a list or an empty list at this point called URL patterns. If you don't have that and then make uh, migrations, you're going to have an error. So add that, save it, and then come out of it. You don't need to do anything else. So back into URLs, we need three packages in here that we need to import. One of them is the user model, which is a built-in user model from Django. We need the TOTP device, which comes from the um, model library the, the piece of code that I just copied, I'll show you in a second. We also need the um, TOTP admin site. So let's go ahead and import those. So from Django.contrib.auth.models, import user, you really do get used to writing that, although I always have a typo. 
And then we have from, and I'll just use that copy bit there. So it's Django ITP plugins, OTP, TOTP, dot models, import, and you want TOTP device. And lastly, you want from Django underscore OTP dot admin, import, T OTP admin sites. And that's got all of the necessary code in there to create the new admin page. So we need to define a class, and this will be OTP admin, and we need to bring in that OTP admin site. So it's OTP admin site, and all you need to do is pass. Now we need to define the new admin site variable. That's equals, and that'll be OTP admin, and this will be name equals, OTP admin. Yeah, let's go with that. I believe that's what I've done in my main app here. Yeah, that's fine. Happy days. Right. So now we need to register some models to the admin site. Now we will keep adding and registering models because we want them in this one rather than to the built in one. So admin site dot register. You do it exactly the same way as you would if it was a normal admin site. We want the user, and we want admin site, and we want to register the uh, TOTP device, and that's that. Then, so straight out of the box, you have this here, which is path, and you've got admin, admin.site, URLs. That's the URL for the normal admin site. So we're going to copy that down. We want two, so we want the normal admin site, that's now going to be known as, or the actual URL is going to change now to Django underscore admin site. Because we need to set up a device in the normal one for it to be triggered into the new one. And then that's all the configuration that's required. So the new admin site is forward slash admin. And it's going to be admin underscore site dot URLs. And that is it. That's all the configuration we need. We now need to create a super user. So we need to make migrations, migrate, create a super user and then fire up a server. We should then be able to do this all in the back end. So you'll need your mobile phone ready with the Google Authenticator ready on there to do the next piece. So uh, let's go ahead and look here and Python manage.py create super user. Might need to migrate first. times my authenticator so I'm gonna to have to make sure I, I know which code is the right one great so we've now made migrations we've created a super user and if we fire up a server we should be able to get to the straight out of the box admin page and we'll start tweaking that run server perfect it tells you to go to 127.0.0.1 but you can go to localhost or uh, it's up to you. We'll go incognito and localhost 8000. I would expect that. Django admin. <laughs> Django admin, perfect. So let's log in quickly as me. Bobby at did coding. Com. There we go, logged in. This is the straight out the box Django admin page. You will always have this model here, or this app here, which covers groups and users. These are the, uh, this is the auth uh, model. And you can see that's me here. I, am, well, I won't go 
connected to that. You can add an email address, first name, last name. You can change the super user or is staff, and that's where you do all of that stuff. We don't need to go into that. What we want to go into is TOTP device. So if we go into there and we add a TOTP device, we can then select, because we've added user, or registered user, we can now select Bobby. Call this, it doesn't really matter. Um, confirm device, yes, I have already got a Google Authenticator on my phone. And then we save. So that object, when saved, you'll see on the right hand side, it'll have QR code. I'm just opening up my Google Authenticator. I don't need to do that, I need to open up my camera. Right click QR code, it will come up with a new QR code on the screen. I will follow where it takes me to, and it will add me to, it will ask me to add a token. Yes. And I've now got a new token on my authenticator. You can see I've got a whole load of them here. I've been doing this a while now. So I need the bottom one, which is for Bobby at decoding.com. So I can now log out and I can go to admin. This should work. Admin. So this is the one we've just crafted, right? So we've now got a username password, but there's another field in there called OTP token. This is the six digit token that is generated using a third party app, in this case, Google Authenticator. So it's the same user name and password. So bobby at didcoding.com. Password is the one that I set up when I created a super user. If I go into there, what happens is, I don't know if you can see, if that will render okay, but you can see that it's got a little timer there. So that six digit code will run out after 30 seconds. So after 30, um, I might as well keep it on there now. So if I put 339364 in there, I could log in. But as it gets closer to the 30 seconds mark, it starts going orange, and I need to be typing quick to use it, because as soon as that changes, that code is no longer relevant. So I now need to use 469771. Okay, I hope that makes sense. 469771. We're in, okay? So the reason group isn't in there is because we haven't registered group, but if we register it, registered it, it would be there. Um, and then any models that we develop over the course of this tutorial, we will then register them into the new admin site rather than the old one. You can do both, but as we're using the new um, admin site, it's not, uh, it's not required. But that's it, that's the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can see the benefits of having that extra level of security in the admin site. It keeps the toe rags out and it allows actual real users and super users to log into the objects and you know, create, update, read, delete. So that's it. Uh, I will uh, stop the video here. Please subscribe, please like, it's very, very helpful. And I will be seeing you in the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.